them as a week. Good evening and welcome to Agenda Live on TV3 with me, Francis Ankara. Now, tonight our focus is on terrorism on the continent and its impact on our national progress and security. We are doing this discussion in the light of um, events that took place in Kenya on the 21st of September. We are asking whether nations should choose to pardon such outlaws because to use the biblical, bibl biblical phrase, they know not what they do, or take the fight to them to cure the sheer, the, the sheer effrontery of the actions. Mind you, Al Shabaab says what it did in Kenya is, quote, retributive justice against Kenya for crimes committed by the Kenyan army in Somalia. You may join us by short code text to 1734 for all networks. Now, my guest from the extreme end, we have Stephen Frimpo Mounso. He's a political scientist and African anthropologist. Next to him, we have Francis Palmdetti, Director of Public Affairs, Ghana Immigration Service. And next to me, we have Ebad Ibrahim, Middle Eastern political Islam expert. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, Francis. Now, uh, news we've received within the hour uh, that I'm going to start with um, is uh, information on the UK's website on terrorism at, as it affects. Um, British nationals uh, intending to visit Ghana. It says, quote, there's an underlying threat from terrorism. Attacks could be indiscriminate, including places visited by expatriates and foreign travelers. There's a possibility of retali retaliatory attacks in Ghana due to its participation in the intervention in Mali. Uh, let me start with you. The timing of this and this expediency. Yeah. <coughs> I don't think uh, it is prudent that fear should be just you know thrown into the air like that if the mi6 which is the external security for which security force of the united kingdom has picked any actionable intelligence that there is a palpable threat in ghana they should share with our local security forces i don't think um what we have done in kenya in mali will precipitate any attack uh, from al Shabaab or the tuareg rebels uh, in kidal timbuktu and gao and Saruddin have their own agendum, and the agendum is to tackle other regions of the Sahel and Northern Africa. So it's good that they've signaled us, it's good to take precautions. And who would have thought a week ago that a, a place as peaceful, f full as Kenya, which it has been since the 1998 embassy bombings, would be succumbed to such a vicious attack uh, by the jihadists. So it's not timely because this is not the right time to scare us as Ghanaians. But that's not what it's good that it has come at the right time. Uh, the colonel who speaks for the armed forces, Colonel Atintandi, uh, he made it clear that the expeditionary force we have sent, the contingency of 120 soldiers, are more into engineering than taking an onslaught uh, against the rebels over there. So the people there at, in Azawad, uh, the northern part of Mali, uh, those people do not share the kind of ideology Al-Shabaab shares. So I don't think there is any imminent threat against homeland security back here in Ghana. Right. Um, any comments from the immigration desk? I mean, this is, as far as I'm concerned, a neutral warning to people, British nationals wanting to come to Ghana. Yes, I, I, yes. I, I think it's a, it's a warning to their nationals. And it's fair for um, foreign countries that s think that they are, tr they are targets of terrorist activities to warn their nationals wherever they, were, wherever they are in the world. And so I, I do not think it's inappropriate on their part. Um, the threat is also not targeted to the Ghanaian audience. It's to their people. Um, regarding intelligence, we share intelligence quite extensively. And I think um, we have been doing that quite vigorously over the, uh, since 9-11. We have been doing extensive exchange of information. The national security apparatus also has 
regular meetings with all the security couples to discuss um, any intelligence leads, etc. So it's, we have a situation where we are all on the same page regarding what's going on. We also do share um, information on terrorists or terrorists that are being groomed, people we should look at, and those informations are shared within the security apparatus. Immigration being the frontline agency is also giving information to look out for certain people mm -hmm. on arrival, etc. Right. Now, um, uh, Mr. Fempo Manso, in September 2011, the U.S. Africa Command warned that Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda were trying to synchronize their efforts to launch attacks on U.S. and Western interests in, on the African continent. Now, in September 2013, Al-Shabaab actually succeeds in doing that and chooses an important date on the AU calendar to do what it did in Kenya. Could we have avoided this? Well, um, it is very difficult to say we could have avoided that because the circumstances, the challenges were just imminent. Now, considering uh, the insurgence of the Kenyan soldiers to Somalia, it was a unilateral kind of expedition, and that really watered the ground for any kind of eventuality. So then, all along, there was this kind of bottle up feeling in the Ashabab. They were warning that they were going to strike. No one thought that it could happen earlier than, than the time that it happened. And all we could say was that it was an attack on Kenya. The question is, Somalians were are in Kenya. Why is it that they didn't target specifically sometimes their own uh, Somalians? But then they attacked a very sensitive place, a mall, where you can get all shades of people gathering at that same time. And one strategy that uh, terrorists use, where we have a lot of crowd, that they can actually get their aim achieved. And then they did a target. And therefore, we cannot say that it was not timely. The ground was really fertile. All issues were just alive that anything at all could happen. And it did happen. And we are all now in a kind of frenzy as the way forward. Right. Now, let's put this in perspective. Al-Qaeda, we know. Boko Haram, we are familiar with. What does Al-Shabaab mean, and who are they? Um, Al-Shabaab is an Arabic word, and it means the youth. The uh, youth? Yeah, the youth. Wow. Uh, you know, youthful exuberance is always crying for employment. Uh, as it is said, the devil finds hand work for the idle hand. So they chose this catchy name for their group because they were part of a bigger group by then. Uh, it was called the Union of Islamic Courts. So those people were able to briefly rule Somalia in 2006 until the Ethiopians came in and then dislodged them. So as they melted into the countryside, when they bounced back, they didn't bounce back as Union of Islamic Courts. They had to rebrand. And the rebranding they chose for themselves was Al-Shabaab. So that rallied the youth, the Somali youth around them. So initially, when Al-Shabaab started fighting the Ethiopians, it was more of a nationalistic struggle that the Ethiopians had invaded them. And I don't know if you could rule the, uh, the um, Horn of Africa map so that I explain. Oh, all right, so if our technical crew are ready, uh, we have three pictures to show to illustrate this, yes. All right, well, uh, yeah, the we'll, picture we'll, is we'll, not ready. Not ready so yeah. yes, yes, right. so when you look at the map, you know why certain countries in the Horn of Africa decided to take any military action against Al-Shabaab within the borders of Somalia. So the Ethiopians were being economically supported by the international community. Key amongst them was the United States of America. But they couldn't sustain the momentum of the incursion into Somalia. So they packed bag and baggage later. So the vacuum they left was filled by Al-Shabaab. Mm -hmm. So Al-Shabaab wielded all the political power for a while until they posed a threat to uh, Kenya's tourist uh, sector by attacking the border city of Garissa a couple of times. So in late, in, uh, in late, two th in late 2011, the, the, the explanation the Kenyans gave the international community for getting involved in Somalia was that they were protecting their interests. They were interests. protecting their own interests. They were protecting their borders. They had come under a barrage of attack by Al-Shabaab. So the Al-Shabaab had been warning. October to September, October 2011 to September uh, 2013, it has taken Al-Shabaab close to two years.
to be able to pull off a spectacular attack like this one. That tells you that the Kenyan security forces and intelligence agents could have nipped the attack in the bud. It's not easy to pull off an attack like this. It could take months, if not a whole year, of preparation. So that's why I think the counterinsurgency should be intelligence-driven. If they had any tip of from within the Al-Shabaab group, you have to plant molds within them. That is how you fight them. But, because but, they have but to, to be, be fair, But to be fair to Keja, I mean, all, all their big hotel, hotels are manned 24-7. And the, 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 the checks you undergo is, is, is standard. I mean, I've been there a couple of times in the last year. And I was, I was shocked. I mean, I was like, this is discouraging. If you stepped out of the hotel and you, you were attempting to go back in, you were searched af as if you were going to uh, board a plane. So uh, it, I think it's unfair to say that they, 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 they were caught ball watching because that's not really it. I think they were caught off guard. The, we are facing a, a brutal enemy, an enemy that knows no borders. It knows no morality. But one positive thing it has in the battlefield is that it has the patience to, to wait for the right time. So they were able to breach the security. Who would have thought that American security, aviation security, could have been broken on September 11? And therefore, if you know that you have engaged militarily in another country's internal strife, and rounds of warnings came from the quarters of Al-Shabaab, and therefore they should have even quadrupled the amount of security they provided their people. The people just struck at a deadly time, the right time, even though it was deadly. And unfortunately, the international community seems to have given al-Shabaab the kind of gain they wanted to get from carrying out that attack. The attack was meant to get some three cheap political points. One, to chip away at the credibility of Uhuru Kenyatta's government in the eyes of its own people. Now, the argument after all of this will be, if you can't protect us in our own backyard, why do you commit our troops? That should be given utmost security to us back home, to another country. And number two, they are telling the international community, even though we have been dislodged from Kismayo by the Kenyan forces, we are not a spent force. We are still around to continue the fight. And then thirdly, they want to tell their own foot soldiers that they are not losing the war. So it's a morale booster for them. Al-Shabaab will feel emboldened. They will think that going across borders to attack. In Uganda, they attacked, in 2010, they attacked Uganda. So this is the second time they are, they are carrying out this impunity mm -hmm. uh, on other sovereign I, I'm countries. I'm told that the pictures are ready, so maybe you, you should speak to it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pick uh, Mr. Fimpoamansu's thoughts on um, where Al-Shabaab has arrived at at the moment. So uh, let's, let's have the first picture roll. And then yeah, what we have in, on your screen now uh, it's a part of the Horn of Africa. Mm -hmm. When you look close, where the, um, the point of interest is where the yellow color is. Yes. You can see where Somalia is located, mm -hmm. just close to the Indian Ocean. Yes. We call that place the Gulf of Aden. Mm -hmm. uh, it is joined to the Suez Canal, and up to 21,000 ships uh, go past the place every year. And therefore, there is a strong international economic interest in the stability of Somalia. You see where Somalia is strategically positioned. So an instable, unstable Somalia will pose an existential threat to the 